Welcome everyone to the Promoting a Healthier Environment, Cleaning and Disinfecting Morburn Vinyls webinar. My name is Ashley Gatchel. I am in marketing for Morburn, and I want to thank you for taking your time out of the day to be with us. This webinar will be approximately 45 minutes long with a 30 minute presentation and a 15 minute Q&A session. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can place your questions in the Q&A chat box that should be on the right side of your screen. Presenting today is Patrick Diebel. He is the Vice President of Research and Development and New Products at Morburn. He is responsible for the customer support globally and development of products in North America, Europe, India, and China. Pat has a master's in chemical engineering from McMaster University and is a licensed professional engineer. So thank you for presenting today, Pat, and please go ahead and walk us through your presentation. Okay, thanks, Ashley, and welcome everyone from your busy day. I'll try to keep this uh, concise and short so you can get back to your work. Um, so we'll get right to it. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to mention is uh, Morburn is uh, recently was awarded one, Canada's one, one of Canada's best managed companies. So this was for the last year. So we're really proud of that. We think it's a, a feather in our cap and separates our uh, us from some of the other uh, competitors out there. So just wanted to mention that it's not an easy feat, and uh, we were the only company in uh, in Southeast Ontario where we're based to uh, uh, obtain this. And I'm. By the way, I'm speaking to you today from our headquarters in Cornwall, Ontario, which is uh, about an hour from Montreal and Ottawa. So we're going to talk about mainly the COVID-19, and which is the disease that causes uh, the, uh, the outbreak and the, the worldwide uh, problem today. It's a virus, but I'll talk first a little bit about Morburn products because most of our products are vinyl coated fabrics. And they're used in a variety or a myriad of areas, automotive seating, transport truck cabs, marine seating, contract furniture. And contract furniture can be office furniture, it can be office panels, it can be uh, casinos, hotels. A bunch, really, there's no limit to where our products get uh, specced in and used. Uh, recreational vehicles, those would be the big ones you drive, such as uh, the Winnebago brand or the ones you pull. Uh, pop-up trailers or the um, the trailers in general, they have a lot of uh, our product in them. Uh, ATVs, which are jet skis, uh, uh, golf carts, uh, snow machines, uh, and uh, marine, obviously, I mentioned, and healthcare examination tables, doctor examination tables, dental chairs, and all of these have potential to be contaminated with the actual uh, virus and should be disinfected each, uh, after each use or before the subsequent use. So that's, we want to make sure that uh, the social practices of, of disinfecting, cleaning with soap normally, and then disinfecting, we'll talk about. Our markets in general are, we have a lot of market diversity and we have uh, synergies. So I you, know, you can see we went from marine to a uh, car because we supply both. And recently we were selected by one of the major OEMs in North America, Ford, to develop a product that has good cleanability, but also good marine resistance. So that's an example of the synergies of how our products, and I, I put the little uh, uh, bee here, cross pollination. We're not gonna talk about birds and bees, but we're gonna talk about how Morburn products can, we can learn from each other and how that works in, for example, in marine, in healthcare, what we learn in our uh, our marine market, we can bring there or heavy truck market where they're staying in the truck for a million miles and sleeping in it. So those, all those different markets allow us to learn and to um, to foster the, the, the development in all the markets as we move on. So all of these have potential to harbor the SARS uh, code 2, which is the virus and the disease. Uh, just for a little fun fact, the COVID-19 means coronavirus from uh, disease from 2019, to, just to differentiate it from uh, the, hopefully if there, uh, if there 
is a next version, it might, would be a different uh, number at the end. Okay, but the actual virus is part of the SARS family, and the first one was about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, okay, uh, Morbin products, uh, all of the, the main ones about the, that we're talking about for upholstery are, I have a little, uh, there's a fabric, so my little schematic here, it's a very uh, rough, uh, the original cut and paste where we have a fabric on the bottom, we have a foam, which is a PVC expanded layer, we have a vinyl skin, PVC, vinyl, it's all the same, flexible vinyl. We have a top finish, and the, the top finish is a very thin layer, it's like the nail polish that you would put on your finger, if you so uh, desire, and it protects, it gives you the haptic, it gives you the glitter if you need it, it gives you the protection. So that top finish is very unique, and Morburn, we uh, have a team of chemists and engineers working on these and developing our own top finishes, and that's what separates uh, really good companies from so-so companies. So that's why if you this whole distance or is about 40 mil, 40 to 60 mil, uh, or uh, one millimeter to, to one and a half millimeter, if you're a metric. All right? So th they all get an emboss also, the texture, which is normally dictated, or, chosen by the designers, so we would put an animal uh, texture or a new, uh, some sort of new modern te texture to uh, simulate whatever our uh, customers or the, uh, the end customer desires. And I just want to talk a little bit about vinyl, because vinyl has, uh, we've been uh, painted with a bit of a, a brush, a bad brush over the years, and there's no heavy metal. There's no phthalates in, in most of the products for contract furniture, there's no phthalates. Uh, there's no dioxins. There, uh, in the newer markets for California specifically, and now for some of the Europe, there's no flame retardants or biocides. They can be added if needed, depending on the design. And if they are added, they're not toxic. They're, they're still very safe, but just from a, from a knowledge point of view, and vinyl's used today to line potable water tanks. It's got the NSF approval. There's huge uh, reservoirs of water that you drink that are in uh, being contained in vinyl lined reservoirs. And most surprisingly is all the, the picture of the blood bag and the saline uh, or the IV tube, that is vinyl. And the reason it's vinyl is because nothing else works and there's no known uh, toxicity. So I always say to people, if vinyl is so bad, why are they using it to for one of the most critical health uh, environments, holding and, and uh, putting blood into us or into uh, animals in general? So it's and it's recyclable. Recyclable means we take anything we don't have, we can remelt it, reuse it. If you have it in your blue box or whatever color you use, that can be recycled, and it is recycled. Vinyl is a thermoplastic, and it's easily recycled. And we're glad to get it back and reuse it because it, we can uh, re recycle it and reduce costs at the same time. Uh, a little bit about the actual uh, websites that are in, are in the sources of information. The Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta is one of the main ones. It's a global uh, leader and has a lot of clout. And I just want to show the website. This is just a, a screen a shot that I'm using uh, to make sure that we're using credible data. And the other, and what they recommend is to disinfect. There's a bunch of EPA registered cleaners, which we can talk about or you can look at. And most of them are okay for, for uh, disinfecting vinyl or cleaning, depending. But we're really talking about disinfecting, which means killing or uh, destroying the actual virus, or in some cases, bacteria or fungus. Uh, diluted bleach, though, is, is what they recommend. And, and bleach is, here we are, Clorox is the name brand. I'm not getting any endorsement from Clorox, but uh, if they so desire, they can uh, find me. Um, it is a standard bleach. It's about 5% sodium hypochlorite. It's a very good product. It's an oxidizer, uh, and they recommend you take it and you dilute it either five uh, tablespoons per gallon of water or four teaspoons per quart. And that gives you, uh, you mix that up, and I'll show you in a minute how we do that. And you, uh, you worry, make sure you don't spill it on your uh, clothes or on any 
non uh, other fabric, so it'll end up eating a hole, a hole in it. But vinyl's okay, and don't get it in your eyes or skin. Obviously, it's uh, it can be quite, especially the, the concentrated, the, the five to six percent. That is uh, really uh, can be nasty. Uh, and the other one they recommend here is seventy percent isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is uh, the standard rubbing alcohol that you can buy in a pharmacy or um, in many stores to uh, disinfect for your skin or, or makeup removal, all these different applications. It's an alcohol. Uh, and I'll talk uh, on all of these products. All, before I move on, I'll talk, we're all, since we're in Canada and, and we're part of uh, the North American uh, uh, sales, we make the products here, but we sell a lot. Hopefully, high Canadian uh, listeners. We are very um, aware of the government of Canada. Has, we have our own scientists that de develop uh, research and come up with the, the proposals and the, and the advice. So the Canadian website, it's Health Canada. And uh, just like in the US, they lead the way. And they work with the, the Centers for Disease Control. And they also hear hard surface disinfecting. They were metric here in Canada, but we can go uh, uh, either way as far as um, measuring things. We've got uh, 250 milliliters per uh, of water for five milliliters of bleach, or one liter of water per 20 milliliters of bleach. And both of those are enough to give you a concentration of the bleach to uh, kill and destroy the, the virus. And that comes out to anywhere between one and 100 and one, we've got as high as uh, you know one to 50, even one to 25 in some cases people want. Uh, it, the, the vinyl's okay, but sometimes uh, too much is not necessarily better. So just stick with these uh, recommended dilutions. Oh, and I wanted to, anyone who's from around the, the world or Europe and specifically, this is a European uh, Center for Disease Prevention and Control. And they actually recommend one, the same idea, but one per 100. So a little less concentrated, do the same job. It really shows that that uh, bleach is, uh, diluted bleach from one to 100 to, if you use the full uh, concentration, they would obviously kill it too, but we don't recommend that. But that, all the, and I'm sure in Australia, they have their own uh, uh, experts and government uh, uh, websites and, and officials and all through the world. They, they normally uh, have the same instruction. And, uh, and by the way, you know, bleach is very good for cleaning. I don't drink it, no matter what you hear. It's not good. Uh, it won't kill the virus that way. It, it'll harm you. Um, but here, here's three that I mentioned. Clorox, which is bleach. Isopropyl alcohol, which we recommend 70%. This one is actually 91, but 70% is actually better. This is an example where less is better because it gives it's, it's mixed with water, 70% so isopropyl alcohol, 30% water. You don't have to dilute it. You're, you normally buy it like that. Here we are, 70% in my little prop bag here. Um, and this will, uh, give it time because it'll evaporate at the higher concentration. It gives it time to penetrate the envelope of the virus and be more effective. 90% will still work, but this is going to work better, be a little more insurance, assurance that you're not going to evaporate before you kill the virus, okay? And the other one is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, in my photo or here, that is um, H2O2. It's uh, water with an extra, extra oxygen, and that is an oxidizer, just like uh, bleach is a uh, an oxidizer. And the the just like rust, it's like it's a quick rust, a rapid rusting, and, and it kills the the protein and the lipids and the fats on the virus, and it destroys them, and then they can't reproduce or cause any issues. And we always recommend at least a one minute dwell time and then rinse. And if you don't rinse, with the main reason you rinse is you don't wanna leave the re residue of these cleaners on the surface because then when an occupant comes into the chair or someone touches it, they will likely uh, have concentrated or the, the bleach or the 
IPA, isopropyl alcohol, or H2O2 on them, and that could cause some, um, some irritation of their skin or damage their clothes. So don't rinse. It's not the end of the world. It's still, uh, it's, uh, the vinyl will be fine. Marburn vinyl, obviously, I'm not speaking for every, uh, we, we have very, uh, uh, our formulations are vetted and we, we have many years of experience. So, so some vinyl, not all vinyls are the same. Okay, disinfecting our products. And there's also something called quads. This is the uh, quaternary ammonias. They're used uh, around the world, mainly in healthcare hospitals. And it's uh, uh, a quick way to quickly disinfect a surface. They, they use some of these type even in operating rooms on wounds to make sure the, uh, uh, the actual, uh, uh, all the potential uh, problems that are the bacteria or virus that could enter the room, they, they want to keep that clean in the operating room. So we test these, most of them, this one, Cavicide, is uh, tested and we recommend it, it's okay. So some of them, though, I just want to be uh, clear and uh, not uh, be too uh, crazy with our recommendations. We we want to test them if they're new. Some of them have a, a tendency to go reddish brown over time, and that's not due to the vinyl. That's them themselves. Like if you spill it on a white surface and just leave it, it will tend to discolor. And that's not the the vinyl. That's the actual cleaner. So be aware of that. And if in doubt, um, check with us, check with your salesperson. We can test them or we we have a whole, we've tested hundreds of these over the years and have a big library. Of them. <clears throat> and often these companies will change the formulation and not tell us so they don't test it on vinyl. So we will uh, will help you there. Go to our website at www.morbid.com. There's many uh, interesting articles on there, not just for, for this topic, be aware of that. Okay, so now I'm going to show my live um, uh, demo, hopefully. I have to remember to do this. Um, can you see me? Uh, someone's got to tell me. Yes, okay. I got a yes from Ashley. All right, full screen, hopefully. Uh, if not, then you you can make it full screen or you, you'll have to... Uh, live with the little little view of me. So I'm going to talk about our product and how we um, so we take our vinyl like this some saw right this is vinyl we then form it into a um, a little boat we call it a I don't know if you can see this so put it up by the camera it's very complicated uh, four staples and and then we I'm going to put my safety glasses on because I'm dealing with bleach we take in this case it can be 10 to 1 or 9 to 1 but uh in this case it is 9 to 1 of water to one part of the sodium hypochlorite the clorox the bleach so we would this is water since it's so technical i'll call it h2o this is bleach and sodium and ao chlorine so that's sodium hypochlorite. You put one into the other and you be careful because bleach, you know, you don't have to have these fancy uh, graduated cylinders or beakers, but we do. So then you mix it and it smells typical bleach like you're going to uh, bleach your clothes or bleach whatever you want to. So now that is uh, ready for the test. You would pour that in and I'm not going to do it because uh, I'm just gonna be like on the baking show is pretend. Uh, you, you pour it in this little boat and we leave it. We leave it for a day. We come in the next morning, we fill it up again. We do it again, we do it four times. So now you've got a concentrated bleach in here. And here is after. So before and after, we look at it, in this case, we look at it, no color fade. We then do a, a flex test called either a W flex or a belly flex. And then we, we are really, uh, we look at it I'm under, this is 15 times and I don't see any cracks. We go good to go, that bleach concentration or that quad or that whatever alcohol is okay to use. 
All right. So the we also do it on other products. We just we do it on our uh, camo product. Same. We do it on this uh, vinyl hair. It's a Carrera product. We do. It, they all pass. Okay. And then just because we like to know what what else is out there, we test other products. We test. Um, this is a high end urethane. Uh, the premium urethane on the market. I won't give names, uh, but it is a good one and it's got a real nice hand, but we tested it. So I took the same, there it is before, and and here it is after. Okay, I can stick, I don't know if you can see. Not good. That's what happens to urethanes. And this is a premium urethane. Why is that happening to urethanes? They're, they're good products if you don't get them wet, and especially if you don't get them wet with bleach or um, uh, any aqueous isopropyl alcohol, also is mainly water or um, hydrogen peroxide. So be careful, okay? I also tested a, um, a new product on the market that is uh, being touted non-PVC, and I tested it, and it's hard to see that I'll show you in a minute, that it's gone right through to the fabric. So vinyl is pretty indestructible. That's what uh, we find. Okay, so, um, and I'm going to go back to where I was, Todd. Share screen. Okay, so I'm sorry if, uh, uh, okay, so yeah, you know, I'm not a webinar guy, so you have to bear with me here. Okay, well, I'm going to go this way. So there's the, the samples. Um, Feedback was you couldn't necessarily see them well when I did my, my uh, dry run. So here we are, before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, so we're these are not Marvin products, by the way. Um, but even if they were, they would still happen. But they're not. But our vinyl, in general, vinyls are bulletproof. They're used, you know, uh, all sorts of applications where there's high pH, low pH. Uh, um, we also have these other products on our website. Uh, this is um, Ashley has uh, created this with input from our technical team here. Uh, the CFFA, which is an organization of uh, vinyl producers and suppliers, they recommend Clorox, Clorox hydrogen peroxide. So that's a hydrogen peroxide is the main component. People bundle it with some surfactants and put a fancy label on it so they can charge more. But in general, and the same as the bleach, right? They put that. Uh, into a spray bleach, that you're more or less spraying bleach. And then the third one is uh, also a, uh, a bleach. But you could, uh, they're all listed. And but the, really the main point is they're based on either bleach, isopropyl alcohol, uh, or hydrogen peroxide. And if you use non-isopropyl alcohol, if you use uh, ethanol, which is the alcohol that you would drink uh, in a martini, that is uh, also effective if it's over 70%, but normally it's not. It's between 40 and 50%. But you can buy denatured alcohol. Uh, that if you drink it, you'll go blind. And don't drink uh, rubbing alcohol either, because you will go blind. Um, and methanol. Methanol is another one. They're all little cousins of each other on the alcohols. And if you know your chemistry, you can, you can uh, remember that. If not, then trust me. Hydrogen peroxide, as I say, that's in. Uh, it was used for disinfecting wounds in the battlefields of world wars and all that. So it's very good at, at uh, killing and actually, uh, in some cases, actually, if it's high enough concentration, it'll uh, cauterize the skin. Um, okay, here's the, the, what did he call it? The invisible enemy or the uh, vicious virus. This is COVID. This is not COVID-19, that's the disease that I was made aware. This is cold to SARS cold too. And the the gray area is lipid. Lipid is a fancy word for a fat. And those spikes, red spikes, those are protein. Protein, muscles are made of protein. In this case, these are made of protein and they're really sticky protein. So it's like a glue. And why does soap and water, why does uh, why do they keep saying wash your hands? It's not just your mom telling you, it's uh, everyone's telling you to wash your hands because the lipid uh, is attacked. This is this is my 
high end prop uh, of a soap. One end is hydrophobic and one end is hydrophilic. That means one end loves water and one end doesn't. This end loves grease or oil or lipid or virus envelope. So it'll stick to the virus envelope and break it. And then the water portion hangs on there. And when you wash your hands, it all goes down off your hands and cleans it. So that is why hydrophilic hydrophobic soap was invented way back in 1800 BC in Babylon. They figured it out then and they didn't know about the virus. The viruses weren't, uh, you know, viruses were not really discovered until some Russian uh, scientist, Dmitry Ivanovsky, in, uh, he was looking, trying to figure out where these were. Uh, bacteria were single cells. They couldn't figure out where, what the virus was. It's actually, um, they call the virus means poison in, in uh, Latin. He, they thought it was some byproduct, the P or poo of the bacteria, but it was actually, the virus, what it does, these little sticky, um, in this case, the sticky protein latch on to cells in our lungs, and it's a special uh, cell, or in a special, it's actually an, it's a, called ACE2 in your lung, and that more or less burrows a hole into that cell, and the, the virus goes in there, starts, takes over the RNA, which is part of the cell, and replicates itself, makes copies, makes copies. That's really, um, smart, I guess, but not really the right term, but uh, a good way to replicate yourself. You're using the cell, the information in that lung cell, to make copies of yourself. Once you have enough of you, you've got a thousand of you, you say, okay, let's get out of here. So you get out, you uh, make a hole on the other side of the cell and you vacate and then you are reproduced. But that lung cell now is damaged, so it's going to uh, your natural white blood cells and all the lymph system is going out trying to fight this and repair it and that's why you start coughing and that's why you potentially uh, get a fever fighting this and if your lungs are really uh, compromised you can't breathe and you have to go on these incubators or ventilators that you better heard so that's that's enough information about that but really viruses are too small to see they were not seen even with a, a standard microscope they're about one one hundredth size of a bacteria, and uh, they're sort of halfway alive, half not alive. They're proteins, and they're but their chemistry is re they reproduce. They've been around a lot longer than us. They've been around millions of years, whereas humans been whatever one hundred and fifty thousand years since we came out of Africa. Okay, so here why you wash your hands. I talked about this. So wash your hands uh, to kill that. Uh, lipid, break that lipid down, the fat and the virus. Also to remove any dirt, get under your fingernails because they can live there and all the cracks, 20, uh, 20 to 30 seconds. Hot water is better because everything is uh, happens a little faster. It dissolves the fats faster. Uh, but if you don't have hot water, cold water will still work. And it also, water will also potentially kill some bacteria and some fungus. So bacteria, not all fungus are single cell. All bacteria are. Uh, all viruses are smaller than bacteria. There's no known good use for a virus. There's lots of good uses for bacteria. You need them in your gut. You need them to make uh, smelly cheese or, and, and fungus too. Uh, fungus is uh, used uh, as mushrooms and all sorts of, for cheese also. So I'm gonna move on. Uh, as I said quickly, uh, our products are good from a acidic to alkaline, that's pH, pH in the middle is, uh, is uh, seven. And uh, if it goes less than seven, it's acidic. If it goes more up to 14, it's really alkaline, but most of our uh, environment is more on the acid side. Uh, battery acids are around two and Coca-Cola is around four to five. And uh, so vinyl can take all these. That's really, they, it can withstand these different pHs. And it can also withstand the water-based cleaners. I talked about the bleaches and the oxidizers. Um, and I want to talk a little bit. I showed you that picture, remind you, uh, of the PU. So this is an actual waiting room with chairs that would use PU. And as you can see, where the back of the knees touch, you get liquid uh, coming out of your body, perspiration or oils or the cleaners they use. And that destroys, you can see on the ground, you can actually see those little flakes. Not very uh, nice for your waiting room to have that um, those product uh, failing. So 
obviously that's why uh, I wouldn't, if I owned a facility, I wouldn't use a PU uh, product if it was going to be cleaned uh, regularly with aqueous solutions or any of these cleaners. Uh, they're just the nature of them. And, and the reason is just the, it, it's uh, something called hydrolysis and they break down more quickly than PVC or PVC filtrate. So I want to make you aware, our more care line, which has been uh, developed about uh, 10, 15 years ago or longer, it's really the, the, uh, the best product in our arsenal and probably the best in the world for uh, withstanding these type of cleaners for an upholstered surface. And you, you could also get fabrics, but fabrics are more harder to clean. If you use a bleach in a fabric, I, uh, it, one, it'll be harder to dry and clean off, and two, it may or may not uh, degrade it. But it's mainly, it's, uh, and they are more open, they can harbor. Um, we've had cases where people, they change cinema seats because of bed bugs and fleas, and. Uh, and uh, what's that, the lice can live on the seat of the theater and the next people go in. Of course, vinyl, it's easier to clean, so it's a big advantage. So this cleanability become a big, big uh, topic in our world. As you know, we all want clean surfaces. So if you clean them between uh, occupants, your vinyl will be fine. And uh, that's it, how do I do? Okay, I, I'm, not asking. I'm not asking. I'm uh, I'm uh, asking myself. It's the time. Okay, so all right. Thanks, Pat. Um, we did get a couple of questions come through, so I'm just going to take about 15 minutes and ask you some questions, and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, the first one is: Does Morburn vinyls contain BPA? Okay, that's a good question, and it's an easy answer. The answer is no. N O no BPA. Never has, never will be. Okay. All right. Um, and then next is what happens if you don't rinse after cleaning? Okay. Can you see me? I sorry, I changed my screen. You can see me. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you don't rinse after cleaning, well, the main detriment to that, the vinyl itself will be okay, but the main problem is, and I is, uh, and I alluded to in my talk, you leave. 5% diluted uh, sodium hypochlorite on the surface and you don't rinse, then people come in, they're going to smell it. You know, it smells uh, not necessarily bad, but it smells like a clean uh, room, not necessarily appetizing if you're in a restaurant. Or uh, And then the other part, you'll get it when you sweat and or just touch it, you're going to, it'll get on your hand, it'll get on your clothes, and it will uh, damage your, especially cottons, it'll uh, eat a hole in your clothes, like this, uh, or in your fingers. Some people have eczema; they're more sensitive. Even if you don't, uh, open wound, whatever. You know, so that's the main reason. If you don't clean after isopropyl alcohol is less of a problem because uh, it doesn't have as much odor, but it still does the rubbing alcohol odor and um, the peroxide will, uh, it'll decay with time. It has a shelf life anyway. So you have to, I didn't mention that, but the bleach and the, and the IPA, uh, not the IPA, the hydrogen peroxide, they have shelf life. So read the expiry date on the bottle, or I would say one year max, keep them sealed. They're normally in an opaque container so that sunlight doesn't get at them. That's designed so they don't break down. So be aware of that. You can still use it. If it's one year plus a day old, don't throw it out. You might just have to use it at a higher, uh, less diluted. Okay. Okay. All right. The next one is if someone prefers a 91% isopropyl alcohol, is there an adverse impact on the vinyl? Uh, isopropyl alcohol, no, it, it's not going to um, degrade it. Uh, any worse than the 70%. It, it really, it won't bother it. Uh, isopropyl alcohol is, um, it's going to evaporate anyway, it's, but the, the experts recommend 70%, as I said, to give it time to, uh, for the water, because water evaporates less quick and they're miscible and they become one. So the, the, the solution will be more effective of the 70-30 than the 90%, but the answer is no, it won't affect it negatively. 
Okay. Um, someone else had also asked about hydrogen peroxide. Um, you had mentioned 1% and 3% and they asked which is preferable. You know, it's, that's really a question of how to kill the virus. It's for vinyl, we're okay with either, but if you go to the websites, the Center for Disease Control, the, the uh, Environment or Health Canada, this particular one, uh, somewhere says here is 1.4%. And this is uh, Clorox. So any, any, I wouldn't go above 5%. I, I don't think you can buy above 5% in a, without going to an industrial supply house. And they all, uh, hydrogen peroxide over time becomes less concentrated. Even it's just, uh, it's not a stable molecule. So it will, be less concentrated over time to even into the bottle. Okay. Um, the next one I have is how long can a cleaner stay on the vinyl and does it vary by top coat or pattern? Okay, that's a good question. I think our more uh, the best product, as I mentioned, is our more care line, which has a uh, very heavy, robust uh, top finish that is the best in its class. So you could leave things on that. Um, I would say, I don't want to say indefinitely because I haven't tested them. I wouldn't put 100% bleach on any of them. But at the concentrations I mentioned in my talk, there is no uh, need to, to uh, remove them. So I guess the answer, now if you keep doing it day in, day out, the concentration will build up and build up. Um, or it'll be more and more uh, of the active ingredient if it uh, bleach uh, would have a residue and it would get very white, a whitish um, material, uh, like a little dust on the surface, and that's not good uh, for the, I think, for the environment, for the people sitting on it. So I would, I still recommend, if, if possible, even, you don't have to do a big, you know, get the hose out and rinse it off, just wipe it with a, a, a towel with um, water, and if you're doing a big bench, you don't have to, you know, do it every, say every two or three square meters, rinse it out and do it again, the square yards. Okay. Okay. Um, the next is in high traffic areas, uh, for instance, waiting rooms, how often should the vinyl be cleaned? Oh, that's a good question. I would say, uh, every time a new occupant comes into that seat or that area, because you don't know who the, I'm sitting there, I leave to go into the, uh, see the doctor or dentist, whatever, and the new person coming in, they don't know if I had it. So that that's really, a, it'll become a, um, a new standard operating procedure for these uh, waiting rooms. Who's gonna clean it? You clean it yourself. You carry your own. Everyone's got little bottles of uh, Corel or the equivalent on them. You could use that. You could have. I'm sure there's all sorts of opportunities for people to, uh, for companies to come up with portable and and uh, purse sized or pocket sized cleaners to disinfect. So, but it should be for maximum protection. After, before, if it's a restaurant, after the party leaves the table, the the people, the busboy or the whatever should clean it with a one of the approved cleaners or before the new occupants come in. So, okay. Okay. Um, will more burn vinyls stand up to being cleaned repeatedly? Example, how some hospitals are having to disinfect up to 12 times a day? Yeah, the answer is yes. And I, there might, you know, if you don't do anything but vinyl, it'll last a hundred years. You know, you leave, you make a seat today, it's going to be uh, and leave it in a warehouse and never touching it, just like vinyl siding or vinyl. Uh, if, if the more you clean it, it will lessen the lifespan, but I still think the pattern will be out of, uh, out of fashion before it, um, it'll have to be replaced. So at some point, five, 10 years, depending on the environment, it, it may show signs of wear and tear. I don't, uh, it's, I want to say that it will last forever, but it's very durable and it is better 
it is the best product other than if you have metal or a hard plastic it may be uh, more suitable but for an actual upholstered surface vinyl there's nothing better okay um some polyurethanes claim a one to five dilution of bleach and still offers warranties will bleach affect all pus 100 percent, they will they will affect them negatively so i would expect those companies will have claims uh, after uh, several years one one to three years uh if they're being clean now i, I the bleach is one, the quads are one, the isopropyl alcohol. If, they're, if you're using some of these cocktails of cleaners, it might accelerate it, but any of those polyester uh, or polyether or polycarbonate, they're all uh, the backbone of urethane, they're all susceptible. Polycarbonates are the best, but they're still susceptible. This one is a polycarbonate. Now, this is very high concentration of bleach, right? This was not nine to one, but after we, this, this hole will be there. I, I would um, not recommend it if I was owning that uh, whatever area that they were using it. Okay, uh, we have. I'm just going to do one more question, and it is: Can a contaminated piece of vinyl spread viruses onto your clothes? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, the virus is not. Um, picky on how it transports. It doesn't uh, have legs or wings or uh, it can't move on its own. It relies on us to move it. And in this case, you would be moving the vinyl to the cloth and it would uh, potentially transfer. It'll stay there and then you, 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 know, you touch your nose and then it gets into your system and into your lung and that's why this uh, Cold, sorry, cold two is bad. Uh, it's mainly in your lungs, and there's all sorts of viruses. There's HIV viruses, influenza virus. There's viruses that cause the Ebola, right? They're all bad, nasty things. Not every virus is bad, and nasty. The the original virus that that Russian dude uh, Dmitry was working on was uh, a tobacco mosaic virus. So he, the tobacco industry was suffering huge losses back. Then and he found out, oh, here it is, and then they figured out a way to uh, to uh, prevent that virus from spreading. So they can viruses can be in plants, they can be in uh, mammals or animals, they could be in reptiles, they'd be in some you know there's all these theories. They come from bats and pigs, birds. Some of the bird flus are uh, transferred. They they, they can also uh, change, mutate, and that's why every year you have to get a flu vaccine because the virus changes a little bit. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it. I want to thank you so much, Pat, for doing this presentation and thank everyone for coming. Um, I do want to mention, because I mentioned to some of you in the chat that this has been recorded and it will be going out to all who registered for the webinar. So please feel free to revisit as you'd like and uh, get all the great information that Pat gave to us today. So thank okay, you so thank much. You everyone. Any have a great day. Yeah, root it through the salespeople. Cheers. <laughs>